It's time now for the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington, pastor of the World's Church of the Living God, located at 2110 Glass Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, here's Pastor Alan Harrington. understand that uh, God's word is exactly what we call it. It is the word of God. It's so true. Every word of God is pure. It's good. And, and God in, in different, like in, in, I think, uh, was it in Exodus? I know he spoke of it in, in Isaiah. He talked about how uh, Deuteronomy, different places, where he talked about his thing in Joshua. He said, you, you keep these words, keep my word, the things that you learned from Moses that I taught Moses. So you, you walk in them and, and that you can make your way prosperous. Yes, yes. Not just so you can get up and grab a bunch of stuff. No. So you have a healthy, prosperous life, a successful life, a good life. You make your way prosperous. You make your journey prosperous. And always remember that two can't walk together unless what? They be agreed. They be agreed to what? Speaking of walking, that's, that's talking about people going on, on, a, on a journey, traveling together. Unless they are in agreement about the route to take to get to their destination. That's really what this, and you can't walk in this life unless you're in agreement. If you're a believer now, yes, sir. unless you're in agreement with the word of God. See, everything in this book is good for everybody. Some, even the principles of, of this book, good for everybody. It works for everybody. But there are certain things outlined in here that no, the people, but without God, you can't do it. Unless you are a believer, people refuse. People, they won't do it. They won't obey it. Because if you do, your life will work out. Your marriage will work out. Your, your home will work out. You have a happy home. <sighs> okay. All right. God said something, and I hope you 
Follow, and I want, I, I do, I want you to be comfortable because I don't want, you, I want nobody sleeping. I want you to feel good. I, ordinarily, we don't care about how people are feeling sitting in the pews or whatever because we're here for, to hear the word of God. And that's definitely the, the reason we're here today is to hear God's word, to inquire, what does God say about certain things? You know, okay, we're, we're going to find out. And uh, we'll, start, we'll, we'll start with that. We're, in the book of Psalms, I don't know if I marked that. I was studying that, and of course, you see my Bible with all these little pieces of paper sticking out of it. I, I, as I read, I said, man, that's, that's good. And, 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 and I think uh, this other scripture says the same thing, and that's why the Bible... Teaches, and I think Paul was teaching Timothy, say, rightly divide the word of truth. It all comes together. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All yes, sir. of it comes together. So in the book of Psalms, uh, the, that, what is this? Some old. Psalms, the, the 50th chapter. If, should you, some of you are too young right now to be seriously interested in marriage. And I, when I say seriously, I mean seriously. You know that that's uh, in, in your future. That's where you want to go. And that is a destination. And let, let's sort of look at it, think of, think of it like that. That's, that's one of your goals. It's the destination. So you want to be on the, on the right journey. You got to take the journey that gets you there. You you want to become a doctor, you want to become a lawyer, an engineer, a plumber, a mechanic, an electric, whatever it is, electrician, whatever it is, you want to take the steps to get you, the journey that's going to get you there. The training, the teaching, the practicing, the studying, you want to get there. And that's just the steps you take to get to your journey. If you want to have a successful marriage, you must already be prepared before you get to the altar. Come on now. Because Amen. Amen. some of us have stood before the altar without preparation. Yes, sir. True. Without getting ready. In our moral lives, our spiritual lives, counsel, advice from God. When I say Moral, spiritual. Not just hearing something, but applying it. You have to, have to use the practical application of the word of God. It works to get yourself there. And after this is over, you know, maybe it'll give, give you a little better idea about what marriage is like. What is the role of the man? A lot of times when the Bible speaks of the man, it's talking, it might just say the husband. What's the role of, of the husband? What's the role of the wife? What's the place of the children? You know, the, the, the children, you watch over them, you take care of them, you love them. They should never come between parents. Dangerous thing. Division should never be created in the home. In the, never, Amen. never. Amen. But getting back to, to Esther, it was Esther, I think those, uh, those ladies that had to come before the queen to see if they would be chosen, they had to find favor in his eyes and uh, to see if they'd be chosen to, to uh, be in line to become the next queen. They had to go through certain preparation yes, rituals, which they did. But the thing is, you can learn something. I, I, I say sometimes, and, I, and, and not to throw any profession down anything, because like p police officers, you have some people who are really concerned about giving a good service yes. to the public. Yes, they do what they have to do. Sometimes they have to do things that they might not want to do. But you have some that enjoy having that power. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. That bad character. So character comes into good character. Godly character is important in every situation that a believer is involved in. Prepper, you have to have, you can, you can go through, in other words, you can go through all the rituals, but if you have bad character, 
if you have ulterior motive for wanting to learn how to do this, or, or learning how to practice certain things that a husband or a wife might do, you know, if you if, if your motive is just to get somebody, so you can you know be you know, see, actually even though the in so many words, even though the husband might be the we'll say the boss. If that's your goal, to be the boss in the house, you messed up already. Come on now. To be the boss? <laughs> that shows who and what you, you just, you, you, that, that's, that's arrogance. That's cruelty. And, and you have to have the, the main thing is using, operating in everything. And I'm not going to go there. God will, maybe not. Whatever you want, Lord. It's his book, his Bible, his message. But it even talks of in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13, about some of the, 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 the characters and traits of love. It's, it's not just a feeling. And it speaks of love itself. People who possess that in their hearts. For God, for anyone else, love is kind. Come on now. Whoa, ho. See, character means a lot. Love is kind. It's good. It's not easily provoked. Come on. See, that, 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 that's got to be involved in, in, in your marriage, in your relationships. It's got, it's got to be there. Seeking not our own is not selfish. Always seeking to have its own way. That, that's, that's not love. That relationship or marriage is going to fail why? Because no matter what people say, there is no love there. Amen. Come on. Amen. If kindness is absent, if selflessness is absent, Amen. Amen. it's going to fail. Or either people will, will stay there, stay in it, and be miserably unhappy. And what do you do about that? Say all this in the Bible. I love this book. I do. I love God's word. I love it. Because it addresses everything. And there are some things that, that it might not just, just pinpoint and say, this is that. But for most things, it does. And that's why Paul said, say now, he addressed when he addressed the congregation at Church of Corinth. He said, now, to the rest of the people, I'll, I'll talk to them. And, but the Lord didn't say this, but knowing the Lord and having been saved and God's raised me up and, and, and having his spirit to teach, knowing the character of God, I say that this, this thing will do for the present distress. You know, he offered what he thought, not his own opinion, but based on his service and his knowledge of God and God's word, which is important. The book of Psalms, the 50th chapter, I'm just going to read one scripture here. Uh, in, in, in this book, it talks about uh, the first verse, I'll read it. The mighty God, even the Lord has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. Yes. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge who? The world? His people. Come on. His people. So the eyes of the Lord are in every place, including on us. He sees our motives, our hearts, the reason why we do things or say things. And he says, and this is the verse I wanted to get to, in the fifth verse, he says, gather my saints together, those who belong to me. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Every covenant involves sacrifice, the laying down of some life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even our relationships with, with each other. The Bible even speaks of how, how we should lay down what? Our, 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 our selfishnesses. 
the life of that old man, our cruelty, our animosity, our unforgiveness, and all, all this, we, we, we lay down our lives for the brothers. Why? Because Jesus said, you love one another as I have done what? I have loved you. And I've loved you enough to lay down my life. That's why I'm here. That's my, that's, that's my ultimate goal on planet Earth. Praise God Almighty. And so he said, so sacrifice is involved. And the Bible tells us that we should reckon ourselves indeed to be dead, what, unto sin, but alive to God through Christ Jesus. And when Abraham, oh man, when Abraham was left alone and, and, and he was asking God about how, when God promised him, he said, your, your seed is going to be like the sands of the sea and all this and that, man. He said, how will I know that you said, how will I know that you're going to do this? And God himself entered into covenant with Abraham. He said, go and get me a heifer. What, I don't know how many heifers, and how, a, a cow, and some chickens, some other animals, some birds. And divide them. Cut them in half. And this was symbolic of covenant. Yes, sir. And it had different, different people in different cultures. It meant different things. Cut them in half and lay them opposite yes, each other. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abraham, he said, you get them, you do, you do the cutting. See? And what, what, I forgot where I saw that, but sometimes, and, and you'll find that in, In some some definitely some cultures that like covenant might it might involve cut yes. involve a cutting yes. instead of just giving up a sacrifice, but he did Abraham that's what he did he participated in this covenant and about the going down of the sun you know first a deep sleep fell on Abraham the horror of darkness fell on him. God appeared. God came and was talking to him. God, see, covenant, man. Covenant means a lot to God. God talked to, to Abraham. He let him know, you're, so you're, you're seed. I'm giving you all this, the land that I promised, the children that I promised, your offspring, but you, your seed's going to be in bondage for 400 years to, to a nation that doesn't know me. So he gave him a secret too. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. That's the truth. Being in covenant with God, it, 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 you are, you are I, I guess you, you are eligible, in so many words, to receive some of the secrets of the Lord because you're in covenant with him. And not only that, about the, the going down of the sun, Abraham looked and he saw between the pieces of the sacrificed animals, a smoking pot, like a furnace. The presence of God moving between those pieces. God in his judgment and God in his awesomeness, his presence, his presence God moving through. And that's what people had to do with it, with, in making covenant in those days. They, they'd slay animals like that. And, and they'd walk down between them. In so many words saying, this, say, this is what we do for each other. We shed blood. We made that cutting. We are part of each other. What's yours and my, is mine and mine is yours. This agreement that we made is, is, is sealed and set in blood. And for humans, it was saying, it, it, let this same thing happen to me if I don't keep the words of the covenant. Couldn't happen to God. But still, God did it. Do you know that? Come on now. Amen. So what's yours? And, and God tested that. He, he said to someone, if God wanted my son, I would give him. Why? Because in covenant, you become that, you become that much a part of each other whether it's a contractual deal or whatever, you're involved together. <clears throat> In marriage, you're together. They too, the Bible says, shall become what? One flesh. You're together. 
No more twang. The Bible says that, not just two separate. Yes, you have your own separate mentalities, ideas, but you're, st you're still in one accord. You're in a oneness. Praise God. Give me your son. God heard him say it. He spoke about it. He said, God wanted my son, I give it to him. And right when, and they, Abraham was going to do it. You know what? We, we won't get the scriptures. We've read them before. Yes, Shocked me the first time we ever heard that. I think we were still on Blackford Street and, and, and Pastor Hunter was teaching on it one, one night and it just shocked me. Man, that God would to ask this man to say, you say, you love me? He say, okay. You believe me? Give me your son. And God had already promised him that in thy seed all the nations of the world are going to be blessed. Yes, and now you ask for my son. And without question, the man got his son together, got his service together, and went up to the place where God had told him to, uh, it wasn't Mount Moriah or somewhere, to, 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 to build an altar and offer his son as sacrifice to God. And just as he drew the knife back to slay his son, The voice of God, the angel of the Lord spoke to him, stop, don't do it. And Abraham had already prophesied that when his son said, say, say Father, you got the, 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 the wood for the fire, stuff for the altar, but where is the lamb? Say, where's the ram? Where's the burnt offering? And Abraham, he just believed that God was, was able to raise his son. Hebrews mentions that. Raise, able to raise him from the dead. Yes, sir. But Abraham also believed, he just believed. He said, son, God will provide himself a lamb. Hallelujah. And just about the time he's going to kill him, you know the story. Drew his hand back to, shed his, to, to slice him open. And God stopped him. And he had a ram caught in the, in the brush, in the thicket. Spared the life of his son. He said, I see, I see. Now, I, I knew it, I know anyway, but I see. Through your action, you haven't withheld your only son. See, whatever in covenant, that's the way, that's the way life is. You're that much a part of each other. And praise God, we have a covenant relationship with God through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything is through bloodshed. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his goodness. And he'll never break his covenant. No, he's, Jesus spoke of it. He said, if you're in the Father's hand, no man is even able to pluck you out. Thank you, Father. Yes. You're saved, you're saved. God's got you. And he tells us how important covenant is. Covenant is, so you made a covenant, you talked to the church, made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Abraham, had, Abraham God, God had told him what to do to make the offer the offering for sacrifice. And they both, Abraham, I'm sure, as he laid them aside, he had to have passed between them. And God himself walked between the sacrifice pieces. Covenant was made. So what's going on with us? I'm going to, I don't, let's, 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 let's take a look here at God willing in the book of concerning so many different things. First Corinthians, the the sixth chapter. Praise the Lord. Thank God for his goodness. 1 Corinthians 6, chapter 9, verse. Starting with the 9th verse. I'm not going to linger here a lot, but I just I want to let you know this. It says, know you not, talking to the church of Corinth, because they were involved in some of kind of, every kind of, ungodliness, unlawfulness, everything. He says, know you not 
that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, and we might deal with that a little bit, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Nobody who lives this lifestyle in either one of those things mentioned there, they shall not inherit the kingdom. And in teaching them and talking to them, he, he told them, and it's so true, and such were, come on now, some of you. So God has blessed you and delivered you from yourself and from that life. Come on now. You have been forgiven. And once you've been forgiven, that, that means, and you can't be forgiven without repentance. So that means that you have seriously and sincerely turned from your own way to the ways of God. As Isaiah tells us, and, and we have all, what, done what? We've gone out of the way. Well, out of what? Out of the way of God, out of the will of God, we've turned to our own ways. But God's goodness, and I say for some of us, I say me included, since I've been saved, has fallen and turned my heart back to God in certain ways. Such were some of you. So don't walk around with guilt if you've been forgiven. Learn how to, 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 to take God's word for face value and for its faith value, live in it, stand on it, walk in it, appreciate it, and just, y'all pardon my language, and just watch it do what it do. Because it'll do it. <laughs> it will. It will do exactly what, what God says it will. It will bless your life. The just shall live by faith. So if we live in the spirit, let us also, if we walk in the spirit, let's live in the spirit. And Jesus, he talked about his, he said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and their life. You want a good life. A spirit-filled life, walk in his word. It'll keep you in the way of God on your journey. But when the journey is pleasant, when the journey is good, and sometimes you might run into difficulty, you might have to stop to refresh yourself, get a snack, gas up your cars or whatever. You, you still enjoy the journey. Such were some of you. So hopefully, when, when we get back to our respective homes, houses, uh, we're talking with the uh, significant others, our spouses. Oh, I'm going to take your job, Bear. I'm, I'm a poet now. I got, two, I got two words rhyming in there, okay? Well, when we do, we can say, look, and, 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 and after this is over, don't accuse. That's the worst thing to do is to hear the word of God and immediately start accusing other people. Come on now. Start accusing your family, your spouse, your children, your husband, your wife. No, don't, don't do that. Mm -mm. This mirror that we look into reflects our image, each and every one of us. So that's why when we get back to, to our homes or whatever, and, and if things haven't been Cool, you know what I mean? If they haven't just been like, and, and, and there's going to be no marriage that doesn't face challenge. There's going to be no, no relationship, no marriage that, that doesn't go through the test, the storm. Amen. It's going to happen. Amen. It's not all a bed of roses, but do you, are you, have you already prepared? That's the thing. By the grace of God and, and through the word of God, have you already prepared for marriage? 
And if so, your marriage, you will stand in it, being immovable from your faith in God and from the character that God builds in a man as a husband or a woman as a wife. You will be immovable. And God will continue to bless that union. He'll do it. But you have to participate in it. Because you, you continually, see God's covenant is real. And you're continually walking between the sacrificed pieces. You know, you're on your journey, you're, you're still walking. You're living a sacrificed life, a sanctified life, as some people say, to the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, to God. And we, and we we made mistakes. And if you have don't don't accuse, just just go home and, and say, look, honey, without attitude. See, I know I haven't been the best husband. I, I I've made some mistakes. I, I, I my my attitude, my my thought process, it, it hasn't been right. And see, and that's the, the the secret to that is the Bible tells a, a, a man to dwell this wife according to knowledge. What knowledge? The street stuff, not the knowledge of God. And what, 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 what does knowledge bring? Knowledge will get, will show you, if you have wisdom, how to apply that knowledge, how to, how to use love, how, how, how to display kindness and be willing to give it forgiveness, and love, and mercy. And just say, I know I'm not, I'm, I'm not taking care of you like I should have. If, if that's the case, just, I'm, just, I'm sorry. I, and, and mean it. See, I'm, I'm new now. I'm a different person now. I see me, you know. I am a different person. And forgive me, please. And, 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 and wives do the same. See, I, I know I've not been that wife that I should have or that I, that I could have. I've not been kind to you. I've, I, I've neglected you in so many different ways. I've shown you disrespect. Have mercy on me. I'm so sorry. And when we disrespect our, our mates, our spouse, we disrespect our own selves. We disrespect the covenant of God. Yes, sir. Such were some of us, but no more. So now let's go back to Malachi. And to say that, to say that your life moves on now. And, but people wanted to know in Malachi, the second chapter, Starting with the 10th verse, and they were talking about Israel as, as a nation and, and, and the, the people of Israel as being the children of God. And it says, have we not all one father? Has not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of his fathers? God left them with covenant, things to do, things to live by, and of course the covenant for, for their forgiveness and things for, for peace and everything. It was all, all of it was based on sacrifice. We're not going to go through the Levitical priesthood today, but all of it was, was sacrifice. And it says, Judah has dealt treacherously, and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah has profaned the holiness of the Lord, which he loved and has married the daughter of a strange God. The Bible teaches believers, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Why marry somebody that you know is an atheist? Uh, does not believe in God. They don't believe that Jesus Christ is... Why, why, why create problems for yourself? Anyway... He said, the Lord will cut off the man that does this. The master, doesn't matter what positions they hold it, God will cut them loose. The master and the scholar out of the tabernacles of Jacob and him that offers an offering unto the Lord of hosts, even those who, who say, well, I'll offer to God. Let me show you something about that. And, and this have you done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears and, and weeping and with crying out, in so much that he regards not the offering anymore or receives it with good will at your hand. 
You offer with offerings. You, you crowd at the altar. And, and you, you want to know. They want to know why. Why? Why are you not paying any attention? Why are you not responding to my tears? Why, why, why are you not responding to my request? Because God does. He knows what things we have need of before we ask him. Sometimes, he was, and, and what are the three answers mainly that God will give? Yes, no, not now. <laughs> Those are the three. And, and sometimes we know when he's saying not now, we have to wait. We, we, we're patient. So they wonder why, why we, we crowd at the altar, we offer you sacrifices, and you pay us no attention. So yet you say, wherefore, why do you do this, Lord? And then he said, because the Lord has been witness between you. You come to me with your sacrifices. It doesn't mean that, that I'm not paying attention to the way you treat your family. Come on now. You might want, you think you're doing a service to me by singing, by, by preaching, by praising God, by giving offerings or tithes or whatever. You, 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 but you, you do it and you mistreat your husband or your wife. Amen. You have broken a covenant. Hallelujah. God is serious about marriage. He's serious about covenant. Yes, sir. And, it's, and you say, wherefore? Say, because the Lord has, the Lord saw it. Man, forgot to witness something. Because the Lord has been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Yet is she thy companion and the wife of what? Of your covenant. You went into covenant relationship with her yes, sir. or him. And, and this is something in the scripture saying about wives too. Yes, sir. We might get it. You stood in my presence and promised fidelity to, to each other and, and love and, and secureness to walk in the ways of God. You said you're going to be, in so many words, that I'm going to be the blessing, a blessing of God in your life to you. As you said to each other, in my presence. So God is concerned about adultery. Yes, he is. To deal treacherously means to have, have dealt falsely, deceitfully. To lie. And some people go into relationships knowing that they're unfaithful. Already. Come on now. Yes, sir. Amen. Oh, and, and by the way, just, just the little extra. If you go into a relationship with a backup plan, it ain't going to work. Because you are already, you set faith up in the wrong way, a negative kind of faith that attracts negative things. You're already believing that it's going to fail. You don't marry like that. No, you don't go into a relationship like that. So you've been unfaithful. You've dealt treacherously with, with the wife of your, your, she's your companion. She's there to help you. My blessing to you. The Bible says when a man finds what? A wife. A wife. A woman who loves him, respects him, cares for him, cares about his life, his well-being. And loves, and in love with the same God he loves. When a man finds a wife, he finds what? That's the truth. Covenant also for men and women alike. It means to be committed. Yes, sir. Amen. The Bible speaks in, in New Testament about truce breakers, yes, covenant breakers. Come on now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he said it in the 15th verse. He said it, did not he make one? Yes. Yet he, ha he had the residue of the spirit and wherefore one, 
that he might seek a godly seed. Isn't that beautiful? Put two godly people together to bring forth a godly seed and God even made provision where if you are married to a, to a person, say you, you, you're both lost and, and one of you gets saved and you love God. God is still, he sanctifies in a sense according to Corinthians. I think we had that a few weeks ago. So that he can still consider your children holy yes, unto the Lord. Ain't that wonderful? Yes, sir. Wonderful, yes, sir. merciful, kind yes, God. Sir. Yes, sir. God is good. Yes, he is. Say it again. Yes, Say that again. I like that. Yes, sir. Say it. Say it again. God is good. God is good. All the time. Yes, Come on now. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, sir. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, All the time. <laughs> because he is. He is good. He's kind. He's merciful. He's patient. He's good to us. He's so good to us. And he wants God. He wants so in order to have godly seed, they won't become godly seed just because we go through the things that, that, that make for reproduction, the physical acts of it. We have to raise them as godly seed. We have to instruct them in the word of God and with the holiness of God, with the righteous teachings of God. We have to instruct them having holy and righteous, the character traits, everything. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To let them know that, what to, to teach them, guide them on their ways. Help them in their life choices, career choices. It's important to teach them how to live a holy, righteous life to God, to let them know there's more to life than me and you. Amen. It originates from the life giver. Amen. And he has a plan for us, and it works. And if you follow his plan, if you, if you walk in, in his ways, and his word, take his word and, and, and put that on the tip of your sword, your life sword. You'll be fine. Your life will be blessed. So he might take, your, take heed to your spirit, he says, and let none, listen, this is in the book, let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. For the Lord, the God of Israel, said that he hateth putting away. Did God say that? The Lord, let me read that again. The Lord, the God of Israel, saith that he hateth putting away. He hates what? Divorce. He said, I hate it. I hate to see the godly people who say they know me. They've received the, like, like forgiveness from me. They've received mercy from me. They're not able to share that with each other. But they say they know me. So they turn away they, they, because they're angry, upset, mad. They'll walk away from a, a companion. They'll deal treacherously with each other. And walk away from a covenant relationship. If the covenant is broken, there's no more covenant. He said, I hate it. And he does. God hates that. Now, you marry somebody, or you're married, and something happens that, the, and, and, and you ever found that some people have, don't, don't say yes or no to it. But just food for thought. Have, have you ever been married to somebody and out of nowhere, it seems that this weird, strange, violent behavior seems to come out of them. You've, I, I thought I, you've been, you have known them in a way for a long time, but you really didn't know them. That violence just didn't come out. It's been there. Sometimes, and you find yourself in, in a, what they call an abusive relationship. Does God want you to sit there and pray? No, get away from that. 
Get out of that. Get away from that. Does God want you to sit there, sit there and pray and lift your hands to the Lord and cry out and ask God for mercy and, and, and to rejoice in, in being abused and mistreated and neglected, not cared for, treated badly, disrespected, I mean, horribly? Does God want you to sit there and enjoy that? No way. Mm-mm. But once you've put together from the word of God, you, you, you've, you've attacked this problem, whatever the problem is, with the wisdom of God. And you've done all you, as the Bible says about wearing the armor of God, as, after you've done all you know, ha having done all to stand, once you've done everything, and that person refuses to hear God, they won't respect, they, won't, they, will, they will not God's goodness means nothing to them. They will not deal with you kindly or in a righteous way or a holy way. The Bible says a woman is what? She's, the Bible says she's the weaker vessel. I understand women like to be known for being able to do the same jobs that men can do. And in some ways they can, but physically a woman is not built for certain, certain things in life. And definitely... No woman is built to be mistreated. God didn't put women here for that. He didn't put women here to be walked over or to be a rug under somebody's feet. Amen. Amen. He put no man here. He told, he, he told Adam, he said, now look, I said, you want you to have dominion over the whole world and all the creatures and everything and, and subdue it. Bring, bring it under control. But he gave Adam a wife, a wife taken out from him. Why is that so important? Male and female, the Bible says, create, created he them. The woman was there inside the man the whole time. And he made, formed the man. He had that, that, that rib that he took. And from that rib made a woman because Somebody, he had to have somebody to lead. He had to have somebody to lead. And men are to be leaders in their home. Not, not, not like some kind of dictator or some kind of, it's not like that. That's not the way life is to be lived. But people follow you, some people follow dictators because of what? Fear. Fear. They're afraid of them. If I mess up, I'll die. If I mess up at home, daddy's going to beat me. He's going to cuss me out. Mama's going to get, you know, these people shouldn't have to live in fear. Amen. But we do fear to do wrong. Now, you should have that kind of fear in your children. Man, if you, son, if you cut up, you disrespect your mama, you talk back to her, you, whatever it is, I'll burn your behind up. Amen. And do it. Amen. So you don't do that. Teach them that. Let them fear, like, the children are the fear it's like we fear God. We say we fear God. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Yes, sir. We're to hate evil. Yes, sir. We, we fear to do, we fear God. We know God means what he says, and, and I fear to disrespect God. God is a consuming fire. Amen. Yes. God is nothing and nobody to be played with. Amen. But God is also so kind, so loving, so confident, so tender, so warm. Yes. He wants us to fear to do evil. Yes. And that's the way we should raise our children. That's the way husbands and wives should live together. A wife shouldn't have to live in fear of the husband. And it's not just for the husband to not deal treacherously. The, the, the Bible says, while we're, while we're thinking about it, uh, well, let me finish this. He says, therefore, take heed in the 16th verse, take heed to your spirit now that you deal not treacherously with your wife. Make sure you don't. Now, in the book of, of uh, Proverbs, right quick, and then we're going to get these out of the way where we can move on through some things. In talking about the word of God and, and, and the wisdom that it'll give, I, I know I know for a fact this, this is a little different. And it's not for everybody. The entire counsel of God is for believers. 
Whenever you hear somebody, if you read something in uh, Ezra, and some people say, well, I just don't believe this. You have just thrown away the entire counsel of God. You've just made it known that I don't believe that's the word. I don't believe that. That's not for me. You've made a statement that I am an unbeliever. The entire counsel of God is for believers. As a matter of fact, I made a note on one of these scriptures a while back. I know this is the, my old Bible, so I know it's in there. The book of, of uh, Proverbs, giving wisdom, father, fatherly advice to his son, advice and wisdom that he's gotten from God. And it says, uh, starting with the 11th verse, no, 10th verse, it says, when wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant to thy soul. What wisdom? The wisdom of God, the knowledge of God. Discretion shall preserve thee. Hallelujah. Understanding shall keep thee. To do what? To keep thee from, from the way of the evil man. From the man that speaketh forward things. What, what are forward things? Perverse things. Listen. Who leave the paths of uprightness. They leave the way of God that they know is right to walk where? To walk in darkness. They choose that. L listen to this. To walk in the ways of darkness. Who rejoice to do evil and delight in the forwardness of the, in the perverseness of the wicked. People rejoice. They, they love to live in perversion. Anything that's anti-God, anti-holy, they can enjoy it. People are anti-God. They can enjoy it. They seem to, to knit, to fit together. Something wrong there. Who rejoice to do evil and delight in the forwardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked, and they are forward, in the other words, in their paths. And this says, now these words, the wisdom of God will give you, young men, the, the, the wisdom, the capability, the understanding, if we pay attention to deliver thee from the strange woman, even the stranger which flattereth with her words, the person who's, who's, who's wanting to entice you. You're married, you got a wife at home. Come on now. Hallelujah. And this woman who says, which she has forsaken the guide of her youth. Who is that? God. She might have she been raised in a godly family, a godly home. And she, the Bible says, the, God's word will keep you from this. And forget it, the covenant of her God. This woman is married. Her house declines unto the dead, unto, unto death, and her paths lead to dead. None that go unto her return again. Come on now. Amen. If you love life, don't get involved with a covenant breaker. Yes, Matrimony is a covenant. It's a covenant made in the sight of God. A covenant made between two people, not just two, but three. Made before, in, and made to the person of the Almighty. So God hates covenant breaking on, on the behalf of men and women. Yes, he does. Come on. There's one thing about this book. People deny it. You can turn, if you see something you don't like, you can turn the page. Does not mean he didn't say it. It's still there. It's still there. So what's a marriage to be like? Marriage is honorable and all. 
It's, marriage is good. And, but, and I see why Paul warned in the book of Corinthians. We're not going to be long. I'm going to try to just read for the most part through some of the rest of these. But I got to read some of the, the, the standards that we, that we read, in, as we, if we want to call it that. In church concerning marriage, make sure that you're ready. God speaks in the Bible in different places. I've read it in a little while, in a good while, as a matter of fact. How God told Israel, I spread my skirt over you. He covered them in one of the books of the prophets. Made a covenant with you. I betrothed myself to you and you to me. You're spoken for. And for reasons for inheritance and all that good stuff, it, it happened, you know. With Boaz. Boaz was near kinsman to her deceased husband's family. And to put her, he, he was in line to redeem, and he did. And they had a successful union. Praise God. Look at the, see, such were some of you. Look at the harlot Rahab. Married into Israel. Come on now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Took on the faith of God. The faith of the God of Israel. I think somebody, was it Joshua she married? Anyway, she married into that land and, and, and was in the lineage. If you want to look at it naturally, of Jesus. The ancestry, naturally, we know God, Jesus was divine. He is divine. Cleansed. But marriage is not, but how did these people make it work? And they, they, they didn't so-called date. They didn't know it. How, how? They trusted God and they lived life taught with, with kindness with the love of God and the culture of believers, not just the culture of, of the, the world at large. They accepted their responsibilities. What they were to bring to a marriage, both 100% involved, 100% invested in heart, a part of each other. You never make anything work and you hold back. Waiting on plan B. Boaz was already, he was prepared. Hallelujah. I wonder... And, and Ruth, she, can't, she didn't have, it, it would seem much to offer, but she had a, oh, the wealth of God to offer. So, it's, and, and it's, it's sad these days. Our grandparents and great-grandparents and all, some of them, had, they had marriages that lasted to death, do you part. And they, they met as one, uh, lived life together as one. Men used to take care of their families. Yes, Come on now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not, not what the approach a woman like, uh, looking at her like, what can she do for me? But she's already, that, but that primarily that was a woman's interest. I want to marry this man. I want to take care of his family. I want to make him more productive. And I'll bring productivity to his life and to his relationship. I'll bring him comfort. Man, and look, and look at it, man. And these days, a lot of, lot of ladies work. You know, okay. They, and still run a house. But we're the ones that come home needing a back rub. Come on. We come home looking for a hot meal. Bring your food from afar like the virtuous woman. 
I know it. Some of you say, I brought it all the way from KFC. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> brought it from a long way off. Okay. <laughs> okay. I understand. But man, you can cook. What's wrong with helping your wife? What's wrong with rubbing her back, rubbing her feet, helping her, you know? What's wrong? When we come home and say, you just don't know what I went through. You don't know what she's gone through. Are you interested? Praise the Lord. God is concerned about every aspect, every bit of it every part of the believer's life. Our relationships and marriages can be, and by the grace of God, very successful and people can be happy. But if there's no love in the home, if there's no kindness, if there's no unforgiveness, if, if it's just if it's just like a dictatorship, that, that's going to be a miserable family. I'm the boss and I'm the head of the house and that's what God said. We're going to read about that in a minute. I, I have to. God said the man is the head of the wife. Yeah, yeah, he is. And you know the only reason that women don't just ride all over us. You know, you already know. Because God fixed them where they're intelligent. He made the first woman so she could be a, a help to the man. Hate him and what he did. And by the way, what's the first thing that God did with Adam when he made him? Somebody tell me. Somebody knows. I know you do. Because you heard it. What's the first thing he did with Adam when he made Adam? Hmm? Yeah, he breathed into him. Hmm? Put him in the garden. To do what? To work. <laughs> Gave him purpose. Responsibility. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not just the job. Responsibility and purpose. Yes. Don't ever marry a man who has, he doesn't know that he has any purpose. What? What is his purpose? So a woman will help you with your work. She'll help you reach your purpose, but how can she if you don't know it? Serious mistake. When a man has no godly, professional purpose or nothing, and not even the not potential, that's another thing. I'm sure Adam learned a lot as he tilled the garden, as he cultivated. He learned, he, he, he grew. He was still on his journey, becoming. And that's what, what destiny, that's who you become. That's, that's the purpose, that's the destiny you get there. You get there. But the woman, when they saw men, she was deceived by Satan because she listened to him. And she conversed with him. She talked to him. And she ate of the forbidden fruit and then gave to Adam. Adam knew better, but he ate anyway because he loved that woman. See, you all have the upper hand on us. To a degree. You have, and, and Adam might have told her, look, God said, don't do that, baby. And she had a way, whatever it was, with words or her body or whatever, to convince him. And he did it. He ate of the forbidden fruit. And as part of her punishment, God said, your desire to, for doing all this, you listen to the serpent. For, he punished the serpent. Took his legs away because he used to walk. Had intelligence, so you're going to eat dust all the days of your life. New language, subtle, wisest of all the beasts in, on the earth at that time. God took it from him. But he said to the woman, since you did this, your desire is going to be to your husband. God created her, made her from, from this rib from Adam. Say, so your desire is going to be your husband. You're going to have to come under his headship, under his leadership. Though you're more intelligent or not, more capable in some areas or not, I'm going to fix it where you're going to have to be under him. 
And that's what's frustrating to so many and women who don't understand their godly position. It was, it, that was given as a punishment for disobeying God. She got deceived and she, she, she talked Adam into disobeying God. And, and it happened. But women, I said, how can they be a help without intelligence? How can they make things work without wisdom? But they do. You know, they have wisdom. And women bring so much in, in, in the relationship now. It's got to be godly. It's all got to be godly. They bring just as much as you do. And you can start here, but praise God. Growth in family, growth in relationship can be astronomical. First Corinthians. All right, okay, okay, First Corinthians. All right, 1 Corinthians, this is what Paul, because of certain things, said this. I'm not going to read the whole thing about what he says about marriage. We'll we, we get all of this one day, but not, not today. Today's not the day. 1 Corinthians. We'll hit some of it. The seventh chapter. I'm just going to read a, a couple of verses that, that we've read before, and I'll add one more. 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter. And it says here to, in the 12th verse, but to the rest speak I, not the Lord. God didn't say, say that I am, but I, I think I have the wisdom and understanding of God to, to declare this. If a brother has a wife that believes not and she be pleased to dwell with him, let, do what? Let him not put her away. Keep that lady. Praise God. And the woman which has an husband that believes not, and if he be pleased to dwell with, with her, let her not leave him. But don't go out looking for an unbeliever. Why go searching out an Egyptian? Mm -mm. But it says the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. But if that unbeliever departs, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us to peace. We're called to enjoy a good, wholesome, peaceful life. And then it says, uh, it says here, okay, what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband, or, or, or to the husbands, what knows, whether you shall save your wife? You can't save anybody, but you can lead them to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can lead them to Christ. And that, that's what he's saying. And then the 25th verse, he says, Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment from the Lord. Listen, yet I give my judgment as one that has obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful and faithful. And, and, and God knows he's, he's led me. He's blessed me. He's given me revelation upon revelation. And he's taught me. So he said, I suppose... Therefore, that this is good for the present distress. I say that it is good for a man so to be. So, listen, men can be virgins. Is it something to be ashamed of? No. 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 You don't want, just like you don't, you don't want a woman who's spreading her life around. You don't want that. You don't want that to happen. You don't want to spread your life around either. And this thing, and that's, God is, he's, God's doing something. We used to be sort of caught in the middle of certain decisions that people are making. Some people are making those same decisions in society. And, and we got caught up and got tied up with some things concerning actual life. Life. Be careful. If you have children, if you get pregnant or if you impregnate someone, you make sure that you are 100% willing and ready to love that baby and take care of it and raise him or her in the house of God, to raise that child in the nurture and admonition of God, not in hatred or, or animosity toward the other parent or nothing, nothing. Raise that child to love God. 
That's the thing. So he says this. He asks the question, are you bound to a wife? Have you entered into matrimony, a covenant with, with, with a wife? If you are, seek not to be loosed. Don't try to get out of it. Art thou loosed from a wife? What are you worried about getting married for? Come on. Is this the Bible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know in them old churches sometimes, and we, we had a couple of people in here who say that all the time. It really got to be irritating. But certain things be talked about and the word become, they say, preach it, preach it, preach it. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't heard nobody say that yet. But certain things come through. They wouldn't say preach it. They wouldn't say anything. You know? so, but, but this is the word of God. Why are you in a, But if you're ready, the thing is, if you're ready, but don't look to, to go to a place that you're really not, not prepared for. You've not taken the journey. You've not approached that destination yet. You, 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 all, you can be on a, you're not made preparation for marriage. You're not ready. You've not prepared yourself. You're not, you can't take, a, you take care of yourself. How can you take care of somebody else? You don't love yourself enough to take care of yourself. How can you take care of and love anybody else? Come on now. He says, but if you marry, don't worry about it. This is what Paul is saying. He said, now God didn't command this. He said, I, he said, I'm talking about this. But if you marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marries, she's not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. But this I say, brothers, the time is short. Listen, this is so true. And it remains that both they that have wives be as though they had none. We need to be getting busy with the Father's business. Amen. Come on now. Amen. We need to get busy. We, we all say we're called. And sometimes we feel like we're, we're called and God ought to be happy with us just because I'm, I'm called to come to church. No, you're not. You're told by God to come to church, not, not forsaking the assembly of yourselves together. But we all should be operating in a ministry of sorts. Yes, sir. Amen. And when there's a godly family, husband, wife, whatever. God shows that person how to utilize his or her time. Yes, and whatever you do, don't ever, don't ever, might sound cruel, don't let your family keep you from obeying God. Amen. What did I say? Come on now. Come on. Don't let your family keep you from obeying God. That's hard. We talked about that last week. About you got you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you, man, you it means to love you. He said you can't come to me unless you hate your father and mother. That's in the Bible, but we know what it means. It didn't mean that you hate them with malice and resentment. No, it means that you love them what less. That's that's in the book. Saint Matthew ten. Read it. But if I'm called to preach, I can't not go preach just because my, my wife says that you shouldn't talk about. Uh, I, can't, I, I can't do that. I can't lay off certain subjects because of her or because of myself. I can't not do the good that God might want me to do because my wife might not want me to do it. I'm, I can't not, not help a family. Might be in, in, in some, some lean times or down straits myself, but I can't not, I can't refrain from giving because my wife is stingy. I can't go to the house of God just because my wife don't feel like going. Come on. Amen. Come, Amen. come, oh yeah. Yes, sir. Woo-hoo. I know. Yeah, honey, say we can just stay here and be miserable together. No, no, no. But yeah, 
You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, take time, go on vacations together, have a good time, enjoy life together. Do things, and sometimes things happen. People sometimes work might come up. Sometimes, sometimes, God forbid, sickness or illness. What that might come up might knock you out. Of, you know, but you don't shun your duties for something that you believe. You say God gave me this. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. I keep telling you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you about some things one day. When, when, I, when, I'm, when I can do it, I will, I will. Because some things are touchy, some things are very sensitive, you know? But God is God. And no matter what, he wants us where he says we're supposed to be, doing what he says he called us to do. Amen. And it doesn't matter, I cannot do what I wanna do because you don't want to. You're like, no. Hallelujah. The time is short. People need to get, but some people have all the time in the world because they don't do nothing. <laughs> get busy. Start serving God. And, 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 and that way, you can, you can say like Jesus did when his parents finally found him at 12 years old, talking to the doctors and, and the, the other scribes and Pharisees at the temple. Say, we've been looking for you for two or three days. Why you say, so you should have known that I would be about my father's business. God has stuff he wants us to do. Yes, Praise God. But marriage, and Paul talked about that too. Marriage is good. And it says it's better to marry than to do what? Than to burn. You don't want to burn up in lust. I'm going to just read a, a little bit more of this. It says, uh, mm, 35th verse, I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare on you, but for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. But if a man thinks that he behaves himself uncomely, unseemly toward his virgin and sinfully toward his virgin or his fiance, if she pass the flower of her age and need, and need so require, let him do what he will. He sinneth not, let them marry. Marry, especially if you're prepared. But don't, don't marry and you're unprepared. That's not going to work for men and women. So what do we have? We're going to go through it right quick. Since most of these you've heard a hundred times. So in the book of Ephesians, we have to get it. I'm going to have to get a few of these. Right, quick. It's Corinthians, the book of Ephesians. This is important. Somebody needs it. The book of Ephesians. Hallelujah. This right here, especially, it's all good. And I'll, I'll read uh, the scripture that goes along with it, too. But this is for believers. A person can't do this and live, not, in, well, people can do it for a while. It won't last. But from their heart, from their heart, they, people can't live in this unless they, they actually believe God. Unless they've been saved and God has, has put his spirit in them. Yeah, people can't live like this. And he, he said here in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, very quickly, it says, the first verse, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. You love God, you respect him, love, respect your husband. Submit yourself, not only does it, it doesn't mean to just give in, but the, the answer to, to that is contained in the word itself. To submit means to be submissive. To be submissive. Yes, to give in. To be submissive to your husbands as unto the Lord. You want to please God. You want to do what God says. The Bible says it is God who both works and uh, both to do and to will in us of his good pleasure. You want, you want to do it. You want to do it God's way. 
So submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. He's not God. But it says the husband is what? Wait a minute. It's a partnership. An equal partnership. It is a partnership more or less. But the husband is the head. And this is only for believers. Come on now. It's married people. A woman that you're dating, you ain't got, you don't, you're not the head of that woman. <laughs> Come on now. You can't take care of yourself, you won't hurt. No. You don't have to, women, you don't have to. To, to fall in line with a man like that because he says something. But, but, but women to do it, why? Not, I, I, y'all, for, God forgive me, because I'm going to do it today. Because you're desperate. Some women, they are, and I hate to say that, you don't have to be. There's not a saved woman in this building that loves God and lives a godly life that, that any man shouldn't be desperate to have. Because she's a, she's a treasure. Amen. Come on now. Amen. And men don't, they don't recognize that. Men know, they, well, they've read the scripture. Well, it's going to come a time it's going to be about seven women to every man. So, so what do men think? Men, men think that they, 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 they're in a, in a buffet. <laughs> they do. They, they, they got the wrong idea about life. They have the wrong idea about relationships and life. And they feel like the woman ought to be blessed because I'm that. No, you, you, you better pray to God that he keeps you away from people like that. That you keep men like that out of your life. This is a married relationship. Now, when you get engaged, what does that mean? That means that you've already taken, you've already made certain promises to God and, and, and to your significant others. When you get engaged in the sight of God, what, what are you? Married. Yes, you are married. Yes, You're, you've entered into covenant with that person. And it's biblical. I don't, I don't have time to go through all of that. But it's in the Bible. But women, mm-mm. you don't owe people nothing. Who? What? A man, the head, and he, no, no wisdom, no godliness, no kindness, no love, no consideration. What are you? Oh, uh, but they want to be the head. Even before they get married, they want to, they you know, you ever heard kids say, you're not the boss of me. <laughs> you better learn how to say it. <laughs> you better, you better learn, get something in your head, learn. And things don't always have to go your way. That's for, for a, a, a husband or a wife. It doesn't mean that there's trouble in the marriage. That, that simply means there's some things that we need to talk about, that we need to, in love, I mean, lovingly, to discuss and try to, try to find some, an answer to some situations and problems. People don't communicate. People don't love unconditionally. People don't care. And it's, it's sad to see people, I sort of say earlier, how some people, we, we have people in about, talking about professions, how people in the health care field, you got some there who care. They're in there because that's their calling. That's who they are. That's what they do. They love. They want to see their patients. You want to see your patients get better? They want to see them get better. You want to see yours get better? They, they, they care about them. They want to bring something to their life, some, a, a blessing. We want God to use them, their hands, their, their knowledge, whatever, to, to help heal that person. Okay. But there are some people involved in health care that don't care at all. That's the truth. And in other professions, it's just a job. Men and women, and, and, and just think about it, in order to get to that point where you can put MD or whatever the letters are behind your name, PhD, whatever. 
your bachelor's or whatever, whatever, whatever level of education, you train for a certain thing, you study electronics, whatever it is, you got to take a journey. Some people do it, okay, because the ultimate goal is not service and calling. It's not who, who, who I am. And see, that's when a person has reached their destiny. They're in it. They can operate in it. When, they, when they oper they're operating in who they are, their calling, not just my name, but who, who God has made me. An able minister or whatever, whatever it is. To be a husband or a wife in the truest sense of the word goes far beyond signing on the dotted line. It means more than that. But it does say that the husband is the head of the wife in a godly family. Because that husband is a God's man in a godly family now. That husband, and we're going to read you some of his characteristics. It'll lay them out step by step by step by step. Coming, not, not step by step, but word by word. But the husband is a godly man. The, his family, that's his interest. The well-being of his family. The family's not there to serve him. Come on. Did you know that? He's to bring service and love and care, stability, security to that strength, protection to that family. That's a husband. So the husband is the head of the wife. So, and, and that being said, it doesn't mean that the wife has lost her voice. I know some of you wish she would. <laughs> but, but she has not. And women, you don't want to be that kind of woman anyway. Argumentative, brawler, whatever. It, but it doesn't mean that you have to sit and take stuff from your husband without some kind of rebuttal sometime. But know how to do it. You know? Your wife always, that's why she's there, to help you. You want to do stuff or run your family in a way that's going to endanger it, that's going to lead it to ruin. And the Bible speaks of that in Proverbs. There's, there's a lot of good stuff in, in the whole Bible, actually. When you're self-centered, self-serving, and it's all about you, and you're talk, trying to figure out what you can get and do, and oh, okay, all right, fine. Man, you'll lead your family to ruin. And the Bible speaks of that. You don't want that. To teach a child to hate, to teach them ungodliness, man, that's, that's wrong. To show them, and, and we teach not just with our mouths, but what's, what's the greatest force? Our actions. The way we live yes, before our children. They see the way that is. And, and you know what? I, I thank God. I, I love, I, you know, I, I really grew to love my parents after I got saved. You know, and Bear, I'm sure it's the same with you. It's to love them, to care about them, but, but to, to love them, you know. After I, after I got saved, but I never wanted to be like that. I never wanted to have a family like that. Argon. Man, you wake up in the middle of the night, and you, you think it's an earthquake going, boom, walls bumping and noise and people screaming. And I, man, what, what's going on? We say we believe one thing, but we show and people live another. What you live is what you truly believe. See, what, what's, what's in the heart, it comes out. That's what really comes out. It comes out. The husband, though, is the head of the house. When there are decisions to be, to be made, you come to, to, I don't know, you got some, something you're disagreeing on, and it's all right to disagree. You just don't see the same thing. But if you talk about it, if it's godly and if it's right, you're going to come to, yeah, hey, okay, okay, I got it. Okay, that's good. Let's do that. But if you don't, say, look, I still don't see this. Right. And no decision can be made out of, of being self-served. Can't be like that. And if you both agree, say, okay, well, look, we still don't, we don't see out of hell. Well, let it go. But agree to let that husband, he has the final say-so. 
And the responsibility of that, and, and if it's manipulation involved, you don't think God sees that. And to use a person's authority or position, whether it's a husband or a minister, or whatever it is, like Balaam did for his own self-service, for hire or for gain in any kind of way, God will destroy you. The very thing that, that's your object of desire, the very thing that you want to get or to accomplish, God will never let it happen. It'll never happen. He let it dangle in front of you like, like a carrot in front of a rabbit and snatch it away from you. Trying to hope you wake up, you know. Husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church, he and gave him, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives, the church is what we're submissive to Christ. So let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. If you're not ready for that, you're not ready for marriage. Come on now. And then it says, husbands, now you love your wives. How much? Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. By the time you get married, you ought to know that you lay down your life for your wife. You, you should all, not, not, well, I, I'll, I'll get better. If we married a couple of years, I might be able to do, no. I have to say if she's going to work out first. Uh-uh. By the time you, the I do's are said, you should already love her enough. Yes. And it's, it's funny, funny thing about love. You can be taught how to love. God, God can show you some things about love. Those, those, those people that met each other, Rahab and Joshua, I think it was Joshua, she finally wound up, one of them, and, and, and different, and Rachel and, and, and Jacob and Leah and all, they, those, man, they had productive relationships. Adam and Eve, they had to get past it. I'm sure she didn't wake up every morning, he's looking at her, you're the one got us into all this mess. <laughs> he might, I'm, I'm sure that wasn't the case. They had to get past it. Yes, sir. Time to get on with the business of living and life and, and raising her, their children. The church was subject to Christ. The Bible says that the wives be to their own husbands and everything. So does it mean that the husband may suggest something and you just go along with it? No, it doesn't mean that. You have wisdom. You have understanding. You have intelligence. If you really want to help him, give, tell him the truth. Tell him the truth. Give, give him your ideas, your thoughts. on. Help your husband. Build him. And any man that's got any sense will learn to listen to his wife. Amen. Come on now. Because God places us in a headship position doesn't mean that we're all that. That's why he never said what the women get when they get us. We, the Bible says we get a good thing when we get a wife. They just stuck with something. They don't know what to do. <laughs> oh, man. They stuck with us. We know we get a good thing, but they just, they, they get us. And they, and they try. They do all they can do by, by the goodness and grace of God. They, they try to make it work. Don't fight against them as they try to make life work for you. Come on now. Amen. To make your family, your home work for you. Amen. Read a couple. I'm not going to. Um, this will be the longest one I stay on. I, I have to get it. And it says, now husbands, you love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Why? So that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water. What? By the word. A man is, and we've heard that message before, years ago. Were we in, on Glass Street or Citico when they said that? Well, a man is to use the word of God. He should be well equipped in the ways of God and knowledgeable of the word of God to be able to help his wife with the wisdom of God through the word. 
He's got to live a clean life. Help her. Jesus said in St. John, I believe, 15th chapter, around, around third verse, you can look it up, find it if it's not, it, it'll show up somewhere. He told his disciples, now you are clean. Through what? Through the word that I've spoken to you. So help wash your wife's life. You're to be the husband man. The hus what is a husband man when the Bible speaks of one? Like a farmer, a caretaker, a cultivator. That's your job, man. To be fertile, to prune. Yes, and to, when you cultivate, you're cultivating for, for goodness, you, for pr production, yes, sir. for growth. Yes, sir. And I told somebody once, and when you, when you do, if you, see, if you cultivate like your plants and your garden, your flowers or what, whatever it is, and you, you treat them right, you fertilize them, you take care of them. You spray them down, knock the bugs off of them, whatever. Yes, when that flower starts blooming, you don't, you don't become afraid of it. You embrace it. That's the goal. That's what you want to see. So when your wife starts blooming and blossoming, Amen. come on. God. Don't think she's trying to outgrow you. She's becoming a product of, of, of something by the grace of God that you, that you helped her get to be. Come on now. Yes, sir. Let her blossom. Yes, sir. Amen. The beauty of that flower is always going to please you. Its aroma is always going to stimulate you. That's what your wife is, is supposed to be to you. Not something that you despise. Hallelujah. that he might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of water by the word. And it says in the 28th verse, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loves his wife loves himself. Why? As his own body. Because the woman was taken out of the man's body. She's a part of that man's body. They're united in the glorious covenant of God in holy matrimony. They're together. So when you love her, you love yourself. That's why it used to be out. People don't say it anymore. People, when talking about wanting to be married, they, they say they're, they're looking for their bone or for their rib. Where's that one? I'm waiting on a rib. I know some of you probably think about a rib sandwich. But, uh, <laughs> but a rib. <laughs> a rib. Some, somebody who's indeed a part of you. And that's the blessing of God. That's the blessing of life when you marry someone. And, and God will bring it together. If you love God, you love his word, and you have the, the least of love for each, that God will grow that. Well, you'll know that man, you, it's like, man, what was I thinking? What was I doing? We're meant for each other. I fit. With her, she fits with me. And it's like she came out of, like you're really a part of each other. The Bible says, for no man ever yet hates his own flesh. That's the truth. You don't mistreat yourselves, don't mistreat your wife and family. But he nourishes his, himself and he cherishes his own flesh even as the Lord, the church. A man is to nourish his wife. He is to feed her. He's to nurture her. He's to protect her. He's to groom her, to help her become, to nourish her, take care of all of her needs. Spiritual, emotional, physical. Her ego, not that she's a narcissist and anything, but she, she loves to hear you say how much you love her. She loves for her husband to tell her how beautiful she is. She loves to know that she's still desired. And it's not just some of you, hey, wake up in the morning, hey, y'all. Hey. No, no. It's always good to know that she's your wife. That, that, that she, she needs that. Encouragement on her different programs, 
projects or things she's involved in. To know, hey, baby, to know that you have, by God's grace and by God's faithfulness, you have every confidence. Huh, baby, you can do this. Come on, why, and, and, might have a, and God will give you good suggestions sometimes. Why don't we look at it at this angle or attack it from this position? She needs you. She needs you. You encourage yourself. Men like to be encouraged. So you want to nourish your wife and you cherish her. The Bible says you, you should cherish her. That's what it's telling us. And we cherish our most prized possessions, things that are precious to us. We protect them. And that's what you want to do. You want to protect her from everything you possibly can. Protect her from heartbreak. Not be the source of it. Protect her. Don't let her become insecure because you've, you've not offered security or you don't present it. Don't, don't, no. Protect her ego, her health best you can. Keep her clean with the word of God. And you will be the one, she, she'll receive the blessing, but you'll be the one who's walking in a blessed state because you're walking to what, where God wants you and what he wants you to do. And the Bible says, it says, we're members of his body and his flesh, and for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined into his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is the great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. The church is the bride of Jesus. Now I've got to read a couple of more, and we're going to close out. Everybody has a place. Everybody. Children should know better. If mom or dad says, say, say well, mama, can, can I have a, let me have some, some, some candy. I want some candy. Can I have some? And my, mama says, no, you can't have candy. It's too close to dinner time. Don't run it. The children should be too afraid of what your daddy will say. <laughs> Y'all excuse me a minute. <laughs> If you come and ask. They should be too afraid. That if, you if you tell your girls, no, you, 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 you can't have candy. Your mama's cooking dinner. They should be, they should be scared to death to run to, to mama and say, Mom, I wish I had some candy. I'll still eat my dinner. The first question is, did you ask your daddy? And what did he say? You know, don't, don't ever let children pit the parents against each other. Adam and Eve, by the way, and I say this, all, I always make that comparison because it's true. They didn't teach their, their boys two different things. They taught them the same thing, to love the same God, to offer the same sacrifices and everything the same way. Abel did it properly. Cain didn't. The Bible says that Cain was what? He was of that wicked one. He was of the devil. Then he killed his brother. So no, you, you, you teach your children not by what, only what you say, but by what you do. Show your children, if it's a man, a husband, headship, the way a godly man should live. A woman, the way a godly woman should live. And the Bible teaches, you're talking about a virtuous woman, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I got to read some of it, then I'm going to have to hit Titus and we're going to close out and go home. What is a verse, if you look it up, in the Hebrew, it's going to talk about her resourcefulness, her ability, her kindness. It shows some attitude. And some, it'll point to, it won't say authority, but it, it'll say something like that, you know? Her ability to make things happen. So it says in the 10th verse, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. So you, do you just become virtuous just because you get married? No, you want to live the life of a virtuous woman. You want to be resourceful and loving, and you want to be a kind person. And it says, the heart of a husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She'll do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She's not lazy. Listen, she seeks wool and flax, works willingly with her hands. She's not lazy. 
She's like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She can take a little bit of something out of the cabinets or the refrigerator or whatever and make a meal of it. And, and she looks after her, her, children, her children. She must have access to some resources. She's a wise woman. She has intelligence. The Bible says in the 16th verse that she considers a field and buys it. She's not afraid to venture out into development of any kind. You know, she's not, she's not afraid of expanding her horizons. Listen, this is a, a, a virtuous woman. And, and with the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. The Bible says this, that she girds her loins with strength, with strength and strengthens her, her arms. She knows her merchandise is good. She, she knows she's a good lady. She lays her hands through the spindle. She makes clothes. She, she's just industrious. She is generous. She, she, gives, she stretches out her hand to the poor. She stretches, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. She's not afraid of, of disaster, bad weather, that kind of things, because she has made preparation for her family. She has foresight. She's a good woman. She's a loving woman. She's a kind woman. And she, she's a woman of wisdom. She makes coverings of tapestry. She, her clothing is silk and what, purple? Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes fine linen. She sells it. So she is an enterprising person. So don't try to keep your wife from growing. She and this woman, a woman helps you with all she has. If she knows she has all your heart. That's the thing. That's covenant. Listen, strength and honor are her clothing she shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looks well to the ways of her household and she eats not the bread of idleness. She's not a lazy person. She's not always tuning in to the latest gossip. Many daughters have done virtuously, but you excel them all. Favor is deceitful. If you marry for favor because somebody, one certain thing appeals to you about somebody, whether sexual or otherwise, beauty is vain, all, all that stuff can change. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. And the Bible says, well, a husband, you, man, you give her her worth. Hallelujah. So she's a blessing from the Lord. And in the book of Titus, and we're going to close out. If you're not ready for, for that, though, don't, don't marry. If you're not ready for marriage, don't get married. Prepare. Prepare. Thank you, Jesus. Book of Titus, very quickly. Praise God. It's been a while since we had this message. And it starts off in the second chapter telling, Paul is telling Titus to speak the things that pertain to sound teaching, to sound doctrine. And then the second verse, it says that the aged men be sober, clear-minded, listen, grave, temperate, having what? Self-control. What? Sound in the faith. Strong in the faith of God. Listen. And in charity and in patience. And teach the aged women, so the older women, Teach them that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not slanderers, not liars, not given to much wine, and, and teachers of good things. So the older women, you, you have a part in this ministry. Listen, that they may teach the young women to be sober-minded. Teach them the value. Teach them to love their, their husbands and to love their children, to be discreet. Why does it say... Now, you don't want to get just, a, a girl's had two or three children. You're going to try to tell her about, about having babies. No. You don't get involved in, no. But if their, if their children are out of order and, and it's not, they're doing, involved in something that's going to hurt them, you might want to bring their attention to that. that that's what it's saying. You're not being a busybody in, uh, of being involved in other people's lives or trying to uh, just get information on them where you can go and gossip about them. No, you are seriously wanting to help them. You don't want to be a busybody in other men's matters. 
So you want to teach them the, the, how to raise a family. If they've just had a, a baby, they don't know about raising a family. They don't know anything about raising children, but help them. And if they have mothers and aunts or sisters who are alive and who have reached that status, let them do the teaching. Okay, let them talk to them, not you. Now, don't everybody start picking on some of these, these young ladies. Don't, don't, don't do that. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their, their husbands, to love their children, and to be discreet, chaste keepers at home, to be good homemakers and home keepers, to be good and obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. In other words, and, and for the young men, likewise, exhort them to be like-minded. And he's telling Titus, you show yourself. Be a pattern to them. In, in doctrine, showing uncorruptness and gravity, sincerity, and sound speech or preaching that cannot be condemned. So, so you, we, we, that's what it's all about. We have to be an example. And the Bible teaches us that if husbands and wives aren't on the same page, your prayers will be hindered. That's, that's part of the covenant. You have to be in one accord in one man. You have to be. Not against each other. You'll endanger your children by fighting each other. Come on now. Yes, you will. We'll talk about that. The very things that people fight over, God might say, okay, I want them then. Now, you, know, you don't want to be like that. If that's going to be a problem to them, I'll just, I, I, what would they do without it? Now, who's going to be, who will be blamed for it? Come on now. You don't want to do it. Be on the same page. If you're in marriage together, you're living in holy matrimony, in covenant life, we say with God together, do the right thing. Do the right thing. And do this, and we're going to close out. And this one, I should have got this one ahead of time so, so it won't be so, so rough. In the book of Timothy, 1 Timothy, we're going to close out talking about the, the family. Uh, all right, 1 Timothy, the fifth chapter. Starting with the first verse, rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brothers. Treat the younger women as mothers, and the younger as sisters with all purity, son Timothy, and honor widows that are widows indeed. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home. Let me just take care of the their, their mothers and their, their aunts and to requite their parents to take care of their parents for that is good and acceptable before God. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate, if she is without, she'll trust God and she'll continue in supplications and prayers night and day. But she that lives in pleasure, she's dead while she lives. Listen, she, she lives just to uh, manipulate, use people, get over on people. And uh, she, she has no, no, no prayer life, no spiritual life, no nothing. She's living in, she's dead while she lives. And these things give in charge that they may be blameless. But if any person, any man, any woman, boy, girl, especially in men, if any man provide not for his own and especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith. So men are to take care of their families. And if you don't, we look for God that, how many of us? I do. You do. We all do. We look for God to take care of us through good times, through bad. We look for God to forgive us. We, 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 we pray, give us today our daily bread, things that we have need of to live and to, to, to eat, to sustain our lives. Feed us today. And he's a good father. He yes. takes care of us. Yes, sir. He heals. He blesses. Yes, sir. Man, he keeps our enemies at bay. He teaches us how to deal with our enemies. He gives us understanding, gives us wisdom. And he says, if, you, if we don't take care of our families, we have denied the almighty God. We have denied his existence as our God, our creator. We've denied the faith. And I work with this, like being a hypocrite, worse than an infidel. We're worse than unbelievers. So for a man to come to a relationship thinking that a woman is supposed to take care of him, you're in trouble. You're, you're getting hooked up with a manipulator. Or they won't because you can't, or you, 
you refuse to take care of them or to get involved with them uh, financially some kind of way. That's, that's what they, that's all they want then. Not you. They want your resources. Come on. Worse than an infidel. And sometimes people will have behind the mask of a believer. You don't want to deny the faith. Uh, now, listen, might have been such with some of you. And some of us might have to go home and say, honey, I'm sorry. I've not, I've not been on it like I should have. I've made some mistakes. I've, I've fallen down. i messed up. But I'm new. I hear the word. I've heard the word. I'm new. Amen. And if you believe God, you Amen. repent. Yes, sir. Amen. The goodness of God leads people to repentance. Yes, sir. And that to what? To turn from their own, own ways to the ways of God. Whatever you do, men and women alike, if you know someone is a manipulator, you better stay far from them. Okay? Yes, sir. Avoid them. The, that's, that's another message. The Bible teaches us, teaches us not to even go in the, in the paths or the way of wicked and evil men. Say, so don't go by them. You see them turn and go another way. I, that kind of language is all through this Bible. You don't want to do that. Don't involve yourself. Now, some people, they, they, they can't even sleep at night unless they know that they've done some evil. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and that's the, but you don't want that. They know. Praise the Lord. Can you still praise the Lord? Is God still good? Yes, sir. yes, he is. All the time. <laughs> that he is. But you can have a happy life, a happy marriage. When you, some, some of you young folks are in school, you might want, you might want to be an, an electrician or a pharmacist or a doctor or an uh, engineer or you might want to learn carpentry, you, construction. You might want to learn, learn that kind of, and, and you, you, you're doing the right, you're making preparation to get there. And that's the way it should be with life. Learn to take on responsibility and not to be ashamed of it. Amen. Not to be afraid of it. Amen. Be a responsible person. And sometimes we, and it's, it's true, sometimes we get so in love with the idea of a certain thing that we, we forget the basic principles that go along with it. Sometimes people are in, just in love with the idea of being in love, in love with the idea of marriage, the idea. But the reality of marriage with all its responsibilities, that's a different story. Yes, sir. And don't be upset. If you get involved in something, then you find out that, you know, that you're supposed to be carrying yourself a certain way. And it's not always somebody else. It's not always the husband. It's, it's not always the wife. Be that kind of person that can say, I messed up. That's me. That's my character. That's my hateful heart. My, whatever it is, it's my stinginess. I've neglected my family. I've neglected my wife. Whatever it is. Tell the truth, but what you have, appreciate it and start over. Cultivate it. Take the, just take the, we've yet see weeds growing up around the plant. What do you do? You weed your garden, you clean it out. Clean the garden out, clean your life out, clean your mind out with the Word of God. Clean it out, and start over. Okay? Praise God. Let's give the Lord Jesus a big hand. We're going to close out. That's the message for today. Yes. Amen. Let's see. And love each other. You know what? When you forgive somebody, when you forgive, when you do start over, or when you, you ever felt a weight drop off you? You know how refreshed and new you feel? Man, it's like being in love all over again. Do it in your homes. Okay? All right, then. I thank God for his word. Hallelujah. Don't raise your hands. But just, just think about how many people are ready to get married. How many are ready for that responsibility? How many 
are, are ready to, to take on that responsibility. Marriage is a selfish thing because it's not about you at all. It's a primarily, if you make it like that, about the other person. And if both people feel like that and they engage like that, you're going to have a good life. You're going to have a wonderful, happy life and a happy home. Okay, that's, you can be seated. We're going to close out. You've been listening to the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington. If you would like to write Pastor Harrington, send all correspondence to Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. That's Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. Tune in next week for another Words of Knowledge broadcast.